One of the most revered cars the world has ever seen, the Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Gullwing. So now we're going to try and kill two birthdays with one stone. All the music you hear in this film has been made with a Stratocaster, and unsurprisingly, not much of it is German. See if you can spot the one track that is. So, while the Americans were creating a music legend, the Germans, mercifully, were concentrating on cars. Only 1,400 SLs were built, and today they fetch over £200,000 a piece. Now, why is that? Why do car lovers crawl across broken glass to get one? Well, one reason might be that it has pedigree. This car re-established Mercedes as the king of road racers, as this softly spoken gentleman explains. Mercedes 300 SL is the newest construction of Daimler-Benz Werke. But what he didn't explain was that Mercedes were broke, so the SL was based on the engine, gearbox and suspension of a plodding saloon car. It used drum brakes when others were already using discs, and the handling was terrifying. Lift off the throttle in a fast bend and the SL would just snap and spin away out of control. Absolutely no warning, and this gave it something of a reputation as a widow maker. So if this car was such a shocker, well, that brings me back to my original question. Why is it so special? I think I have the answer. It was a first. That's what all the fuss is about. This car, I believe, was the world's first true supercar. Forget Ferrari and Lamborghini and all that stuff. This is Genesis. <laughs> Here comes my argument. First, performance. A supercar should always push the outside of the envelope, and in 1954, this one definitely did. It would do 150 miles per hour, and that was at a time when an average saloon car would struggle to crack half of that. It was very light, it was aerodynamic, and with this three-litre fuel-injected straight six, it was comfortably the fastest road car in the world. The requirement of a supercar is a truly terrifying price tag. And in Britain, in 1955, this car cost over £4,000. Now, I know it doesn't sound very much, but back then, £4,000 would have bought you a very, very nice house. And there's one other thing. And this is absolutely vital in a supercar. All the greats had this, like the Lamborghini Countach and the Jaguar XJ220. And it is a really rubbish boot. Oh, yes. It'd be years before Ferrari could offer that sort of poor luggage space. But above all, a true supercar should look like nothing else on Earth. Now, because of the way it was built, the door sills on the SL were very high, and yet the roof was very low. This meant there wasn't much room for the doors. The solution came from engineers simply being practical, but it gave this car the most famous frontal silhouette in motoring history. Even today, in the most modern hypercars, you can see the DNA of the SL lingering on. The Gullwing looked outrageous. It cost a heartbreaking amount of money. It had a very poor boot, and in its time, nothing on the planet, at any rate, could get even close to it. And remember, while all this was going on, Ferrari was still in short trousers. Lamborghini badges were still on tractors. The supercar. You saw it here first. <laughs> <laughs> 